In 9.2, we tackle one of the most important set of ideas in the course. The idea that from a single sample, which we can see on the left, we can calculate what the population mean might be. What we have here are bags of M&Ms and their weight. We have measured how many bags of M&Ms? Well, that's the sample size. So let me start by getting that. We've got 38 bags of M&Ms. Now the M&M Mars, the Mars and Murray Company produces hundreds of thousands of bags of M&Ms. We can't measure all of them. We have only 38. Can we from that 38 determine what the average weight of all the bags of M&Ms must be? And the first answer is no. We can't get the right weight. But the second answer is, it should be close to this sample mean. It won't be equal to this sample mean because I didn't, we didn't have all the M&Ms. <laughs> we had 38 bags, but those 38 bags had a, a weight of 1.9 grams. I know the population mean should be somewhere near 1.9. Probably not exactly 1.9, but near there. And that's what we're about to, the journey we're about to go on. So as a point estimate, all I've got is that. I've got nothing else. If I have something else, I might use it, but I don't. I only know the sample mean. That's going to be my point estimate for the population mean. Am I right? No. But being wrong is something I'm good at. Now, what I can do is expand the range, go down a little, up a little, and I can expect to find the population mean within that range, if I do it right, about, well, with a probability of 95%. It, it's, it's a bit subtle the way probability works. Yeah, you don't really know where you're at till uh, after it's over. But I can do that. So let's get that. We're going to need some. We're going to need the standard deviation. Now the standard deviation tells me that on average these M and M's are about 0.09 grams away from this mean. But for any sample, the sample will have a mean. If I have a whole lot of samples. And a whole lot of sample means, those means will not be 0.9 away from this point estimate of the population mean. No, they will distribute far more narrowly. They will distribute the square root. And I don't need to rerun the count function. I've already got the 38 up here. That is That tells me that the sample means, on average, will be about 0.15 grams away from the 1.9 gram number. That's what that's telling me. Actually, more precisely, it's telling me that about 68%, let me restate that, there's about a 68% probability that the population mean is within 0 0.15 grams of 1.9. That 68% is a pretty low confidence interval. If somebody says, we're going to run an experiment, and you got about a 68% chance of surviving, I think you're going to say, you know what, I don't want that expression, never mind, <laughs> that's not good enough. That 68% is pretty good, but not good enough. In statistics, we like to use a 95% level of confidence that we've got, that we're in the ballpark, as it were. This stuff is subtle. There's a lot of language glued onto it, because... Probability is a very strange beast. We cannot know the flip of the coin before we flip the coin. We can only know that we have a 50% chance of flipping the coin. Once it's flipped, it's either heads or tails, but we still don't know which it is. So these probabilities, there's a lot of subtlety to them. But to continue the calculation, I'm going to use 1 minus the level of confidence I want, which is 0.95 for 95%, and minus 1, the sample size minus 1. These are called the degrees of freedom, and they 
they uh, adjust for the fact that I don't have thousands of bags of M&Ms. I've only got 38. And so it's telling me that I'm going to have to go 2.026 standard errors up and down uh, from this point estimate in order to get the 95% confidence interval. Now, be very careful in number 7. Number 7, a lot of mistakes happen in number 7. In number 7, I'm going to take the sample mean minus the what's called the margin of error it's the standard error times the t critical i'll do it in the other order because that's the order i tend to do it in but it's a t critical times the standard error and you can see these formulas in the textbook that's the lower bound for the 95 percent confidence interval for the population mean weight of a bag of peanut m and m's i'll do this one slowly too. The sample mean. Be careful. I'm talking about how far from the mean I am. So I put in the sample mean plus the T critical times the standard error. Be careful where you click in these operations. About 187 to 193. It's a, it's a, it should be it's slightly bigger than 2. About 2.026 times 0.015 up and down from 1.90. The answer should make sense. Now let me write them down here. I got a one point that's my lower bound. I've got an upper bound. Let me put that down right here. Upper bound, lower bound. Is the 1.94 over on the left, over here? Is it in the middle somewhere, over here? Or do I put it over here? That's the real question. If it's in this red or yellow zone, it's outside the expected interval, and I, it's not an expected result. Um, if it's in between, that's an expected result. Now, you wouldn't know this, but the 1.74 ounces happens to be what's printed on the package. So the calculation we're making is whether or not the mean of a bag of all those hundreds of thousands of M&Ms, not just the 38 I have, whether their mean could be 1.74 ounces. And that 1.74 looks like it's going to go down here. It is not between a dollar eighty. Think of it as money. A dollar seventy-four is not between a dollar eighty-seven and a dollar ninety-four. That's what you're looking at. If you get confused, do some rounding off. That's a dollar ninety-four. This is a dollar eighty-eight. Round it off. One seventy-four. I know it's a little hard to see because I colored it in. <laughs> that one seventy-four is below one eighty-eight. That is not a possible population mean according to my 38 bags. Now that's, if you think about it, that's kind of incredible. I only measured 38, but I can already say that whatever that number is on the front, that is not the population mean mass of all the bags of M&Ms. Might seem like what it is. I don't know what that number is on the bag of M&Ms. Maybe, you might think it's a minimum that they don't go below. But if you look through the data, you'll you'll occasionally see bags that dip under. Um, I don't know if there's any in this data set, but there are, I've seen data sets where we get underneath the uh, 174 number. We come down really close. But I have a feeling it's something like that. It is some sort of statistical minimum guaranteed bag weight. But they do sometimes drop slightly lower than, than that, and I'm not sure. I suppose those are bags that should have been rejected or something. But in this case, I think most of the bags are clear of that. Maybe not. But that, that so does the 95% confidence? No, it does not. Is it a possible? No, not possible. We have ruled it out. Now, of course, bags of M&Ms is a kind of silly example. But we can use this same idea, the same machinery. By machinery, I mean these sorts of calculations for any sort of data. So someone gives me data and they've given a reading test to the fifth graders in a school and they want to know, are they reading on grade level? Well, I can take their test scores and see uh, their, their grade level equivalent test scores and see if the 95% the confidence interval includes fifth grade reading level. If it doesn't, 
the students are at that level, whether they're above or below, will depend which side the confidence interval is on. But it's the same machinery. The machinery stays the same. So I tend to use kind of silly examples in class, but the machinery can be used for very serious questions, like what is a 95% confidence interval for vitamin A uh, in children in, in Juke State? Does it possibly include a healthy average, or is the 95% average below the healthy? And as they found, it was the confidence, you know, the levels were significantly below, which means they were 95% confident that uh, the mean vitamin A levels in children in Truk in that particular study that was cited in one of the uh, one of the early, earlier exercises there. Uh, the idea of vitamin A deficiency; those are um, those. Uh, th that's how statistics are done. That's how research is done. That's how research papers are done. And so that's this homework. It's a tough homework. You try to get these answers. You take yourself through this exercise. Uh, see what you can do. And uh, with that, I'll uh, set this up for going out. But go back and try this one.